Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. The government of St. Lucia hails the $15 million undertaking of the first phase of the Pearl of the Caribbean development. A major step has been taken towards enhancing St. Lucia's tourism products. St. Lucia tapped as a champion for change. All that plus the NTN Nouvelle Arqueol. The government of St. Lucia has welcomed with excitement the first phase of the Pearl of the Caribbean development by the Desert Star Holding Limited DSH. As it nears completion, the racetrack project will host the Royal St. Lucia Turf Club Peter Cup December 13, 2019. Already 40 horses have arrived on island. DSH has spent $15 million on constructing the horse racetrack, acquiring and transporting the 40 horses, as well as the training of St. Lucians in grooming and other areas related to the equine industry. On Wednesday, representatives of the Desert Star Holding Limited joined Prime Minister Honorable Alan Shastney and other government officials in updating the public on the progress thus far. Vice President of Desert Star Holdings and Director of the Royal St. Lucia Turf Club, Eden Harrington, said St. Lucians will have an opportunity to be part of the project. Already some 20 contractors and over 300 individuals are employed in the construction phase of the project and another 50 individuals are employed as groomsmen. Harrington indicated that on the 13th December 2019, the date of the Peters Cup, some 200 additional individuals will be employed. He explained that St. Lucia will have the opportunity to be part of the project at all levels, be it in the capacity of jockeying, veterinarians or management. The director noted that the club is very aware of the unemployment situation in the country, especially in the south of the island, and will be playing its part to assist where possible. We have every intention to ensure that St. Lucians are participating at all levels within this club. That means that they're participating as jockeys, as trainers. Uh, that means they're participating in time as veterinarians. That means they're participating in management. They're participating in IT services, wagering, and so on. In addition, as the Prime Minister has alluded to, this, this industry is not a standalone industry. It is, it is an ecosystem. It is supported and in turn it supports other industries, whether it is logistics, whether it is media, whether it is farming in terms of the need for feed for animals, whether it is, um, there's, a, there's a shopping list, to be frank, but the essence is that there are many, many opportunities. Some of these opportunities take more time to provide the requisite skill sets. Um, it takes more time for, for somebody to equip themselves as a veterinarian, for example. This is a process of accreditation. It takes several years. It is our intention to have all of these things done, but we have to move, obviously, sequentially. The director of the Royal St. Lucia Turf Club added that St. Lucia will also have an opportunity to not only own thoroughbred horses, but to also participate in the races. Harrington explained that the Winston Trim Training Program will be providing the requisite training for individuals who want to enter the field. St. Lucians can buy into these horses. To incentivise the purchase of these horses, these horses are given preferential treatment to make races, to be part of the fields on December 13. So the Pitons Cup is a specific initiative. However, in the support races, very much so. They are here to compete in those races, and those races have a minimum prize money of USD $20,000. The Winston Trim Memorial Trophy stands at $40,000 US dollars. This is considerable prize money, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, in addition, those horses are yours. They're yours to own. Any prize money earned is yours. Uh, these horses are here to compete every race day that we are racing. It comes down to eligibility of the horses in terms of their ratings, in terms of the suitability of distance, and that's where you rely on the skill set of your chosen trainer. With a number of races scattered for 2020, Prime Minister the Honourable Alan Chastney highlighted the scope for all St. Lucians to get involved and benefit from the project. 14 to 15 races next year. It's that opportunity to participate. And so both for the horses in terms of getting their rating, as well as for the jockeys, now that opportunity that didn't exist here in before in St. Lucia. So if a St. Lucia wanted to become an international jockey, he would have to leave St. Lucia. That's the opportunity that's made here is by raising the international standard, we now can now create that opportunity for solutions. So the Winston Trim Training Institution, along with the opportunity to actually have horse race experience. So the same thing that is happening with the horses is happening with the jockeys. People will start standing out 
and then there they all started going on the international circuits. St. Lucia is expected to make its debut into the equine industry with the Peters Cup on National Day Friday, 13th December 2019. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. Meantime, prolific sculptor Jaleem Yudovic has been commissioned to design the Peter Cup trophy. I selected um, a wood called Lawyer Marble, which is a, re a local Lucian wood, a very beautiful wood, two-tone, which you'll see in a while, um, to create this market. And um, from this market, um, I will be doing about 12 sculptures. I think it's the Peter, it's the Peter Cup. And um, when I conceptualize um, this sculpture out of um, discussions that I had with Mr. Taylor King and his wife, um, it had to be something that was endemically St. Lucian, but also spoke globally and also spoke competitively and definitely the host had to be you know, central in this whole thing. So after designing a couple of, maybe around 10 concepts, um, this piece was selected and this is... Um, And the reason why I'm late is because I literally just finished it like minutes ago. <laughs> so I'll be heading to China where I work out of a foundry. Um, and so this is the sculpture, it's a, it's a horse head. And um, the circle represents, the, well the circle is the symbol of infinity, really. And um, it represents the, um, the globe because Mr. King is a, is a global player in the race, horse racing world. And, and the horse means, mean, um, forms the pitons to the bottom here, yeah, and this is the, give you a spherical view of it, okay. So in a sense, here is your Peter Cup. Drawing on the inspiration of the Pegasus World Cup and the Everest, the Peter Cup will see participation from North America and the Caribbean, which is set to be held on St. Lucia's National Day as part of the 2019 Caribbean Equine Cultural Festival. The government of St. Lucia has signed a Memorandum of Understanding, an MOU, with Carnival Corporation and Royal Caribbean Cruises to form a joint venture to manage the existing cruise pier and terminal facilities at Port Cash Trees and to design, construct and operate a new cruise port in V4. The MOU was signed during a ceremony on October 21, 2019 in Swan Juan, Puerto Rico at the Florida Caribbean Cruise Association FCCA Cruise Conference. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Honorable Alan Shastney, has called the signing of the MOU historic and a major step towards enhancing St. Lucia's tourism products. Um, so that means that St. Lucia is going to be uh, the place where the cruise will start and that people will be flying into St. Lucia to be able to meet their ships here. So it's estimated that we'll be adding at least 100,000 new passengers into the Viewfort area. And that that then now falls in very much in line with the project that we're doing at Sandy Beach, in which we are um, building 100 acres of, 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 of property, dividing it up and putting all the infrastructure in and making those lots available for both local St. Lucians and also regional people that we have our own beach facility. And so the way that the project is being designed is that the concrete road will become the boardwalk. So there will be no development on the beach side. The only development would really be the washroom facilities, some food outlets, um, lifeguard stations, as well as recreational facilities for the public. And then we will have now the hotels. And why is that necessary? Because the home porting brings what we call pre and post passengers. Passengers who will come in a couple of days early, passengers who come in a couple of days later. And we want them to be able to stay and enjoy these facilities. Together, the Caribbean Cruise Line brands of Carnival Corporation and Royal Caribbean Cruises currently accounts for 75% of all cruise ship deployment to St. Lucia. Agriculture continues to be an important livelihood in rural communities in St. Lucia. For this reason, during the past year, Export St. Lucia has been placing enormous focus on the sector to improve rural livelihoods and the economy. In that regard, Export St. Lucia has taken an interest in the Black Bay Farmers Cooperative and recently signed a memorandum of understanding with them to help build capacity. CEO of Export St. Lucia, Sunita Daniel, says it is an opportunity to broaden the horizons for the farmers and St. Lucia by extension. We know that there is production of agricultural produce 
in the country and we go out and we see that there is an increasing demand for agricultural produce outside in the outside markets and so what we're going to do is really focus on sharing that kind of information helping to build the capacity of the black bay farmers farmers so that they can then reach those markets those export markets and give them a way of improving rural livelihoods improving their incomes and we hope an overall development in the country President of the Black Bay Farmers Cooperative, Erlik Sadu, says that the partnership would give farmers a much needed sense of security. It's a step forward for Black Bay Farmers because right now, if everything goes according to plan, that um, the Black Bay Farmers could export um, produce, agricultural produce. And um, what it does for the actual farmers is give them a sense of reassurance, knowing that there's a market out there. So they could you know close their eyes and and grow more so that they can at least they could take care of their families more so it's, it's more uh, of an assurance also what it does is um it gives the farmers a sense of security general manager of the library cooperative credit union lucius alavik believes the moves is in keeping with building a strong community economy we think that if export center is able to cause black bay to be export ready and also cause black bay to be able to access other markets that would uh, endow or that would cause greater production activities and greater livelihoods and greater returns for our farmers. There was firm belief among the parties present during the signing of the MOU that with Export St. Lucia identifying external markets for farmers, more individuals will be encouraged to get involved in the agriculture sector hence curbing the unemployment rate and driving economic activity. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is out on assignment, but when we return, St. Lucia pilots a carrying crime prevention program for young persons. If you have to do your own spray mix for Black Sigotoga treatment, always follow the recommended safety procedures. Always wear protective gear when handling or being exposed to the fungicide or other pesticides. Use only the fungicides recommended by the Black Sigotoka Management Unit when the treatment is due. The required quantity of the particular fungicide recommended must be mixed with spray oil and applied at a rate of 1.5 to 2 gallons per acre. Fungicides which are not recommended or applied at the wrong time or even when the spray treatment is not done effectively, can cause the fungus to become resistant to the chemical and therefore may no longer control the disease. Oil fungicide mix which has been stored for too long should not be used to treat black cigotoga disease. If carried out, such treatments may not be effective and can lead to poor control of the disease. Remember, before each chemical treatment for black cigotoga disease on your farm, First, the oil-fungicide mix must be re-agitated immediately before application. For more information on how to treat and control Black Sigatoka on your farm or in your backyard garden, contact the Black Sigatoka Management Unit at 451-5491, 451-5894, or email bpmu at candw.lc. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Agriculture in collaboration with the International Cooperation and Development Fund, of the Republic of China on Taiwan. Welcome back. The Caribbean community CARICOM is deeply concerned over the protracted political crisis in Haiti, where opposition parties have been staging street demonstrations calling for the resignation of President Jovelin Moïse. Here's to Sankin English Francis. Chairman of CARICOM Prime Minister Alan Chastanay of St. Lucia said that the community is deeply concerned about the political crisis in Haiti. The chairman highlighted some of the steps CARICOM has been taking in regard to Haiti, including discussions at the level of CARICOM heads of government and with the United Nations Secretary General. The chairman indicated to the media recently that CARICOM stands ready to mount a good officer's prime ministerial visit to Haiti, but first needs its imprimatur. The decision to send a delegation comprising Honorable Chastney, Jamaica's Prime Minister, the Right Honorable Andrew Holness, and the Bahamas Prime Minister, Dr. the Honorable Hewitt Minnis, had been taken at the CARICOP Summit held in St. Lucia in July this year. 
St. Lucia is among five CARICOM countries selected to pilot an anti-crime and violence program in schools. The Champions for Change initiative was born out of a need to build a social resilience throughout the Caribbean community CARICOM. The project seeks to help reduce overall crime and violence at the school level so that these incidences are curbed before students reach adulthood. The project has been implemented before at the secondary school level, but in 2019 sought to engage primary school students. St. Lucia was chosen as one of five member countries within CARICOM where Champions of Change clubs will be established. Louise Dodson is the project manager with the Crime and Violence Prevention Section at the CARICOM Secretariat. The lessons learned came from what we did at the secondary school level, as I alluded to earlier, where a similar um, study w was done at the secondary school level and similar interventions were made at the secondary school level. But we thought that if you want to prevent crime, then you, uh, perhaps we need to go back to see what's going on at the primary level. Because when, when we test for certain variables at the secondary school level, it was, ever, it was present there in terms of the high level of bullying, exposure to gangs, and, um, and other antisocial behavior. So we said, okay, we decided, that, okay, let's see, what's, what, let's see the genesis of this thing. And then when we, when we do use the same instrument at the primary school, we found that there, were, there, there is or are, are evidence of um, exposure of, of primary school students being exposed to gang activities. The Champions for Change clubs will be established at the Cicero Primary, Soufrière Primary, and Canon Laurie Anglican Primary Schools. The project manager notes that the schools were selected after having met certain criteria, including the size of the school, the need for the intervention, and the possibility of partnering with similar interventions by other players. The initiative stemmed from a rapid assessment of risk, threats, and protective factors that we did in March. And there's where we sought to find out what was going on in the primary school, um, which is informed by a similar study that was done in the secondary school. So what we sought to do was to go back a little to see what's going on in the primary school regarding the, the, the very, using the very survey instrument that we, we use in several secondary schools ac across um, CARICOM, the Caribbean community. So we did the survey in March, and then we did a national consultation where we shared the findings of that survey with the stakeholders in, in St. Lucia, and uh, we hear from them their recommendations, which inform some of the interventions we are now doing. The clubs will be headed by higher level primary school students who will contribute to the development of their peers. The clubs will be organized around areas including sports and agriculture, with the primary objective of promoting social development of other primary school students. Apart from St. Lucia, the project has been implemented in Antigua and Barbuda, Guyana, Jamaica, and Suriname. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arquayon. Climat la terre a changé. Et ça a affecté nous toutes. Cyclone qui a venu plus mauvais. Go de l'eau et que la prendre de l'eau. Car de tous les animaux et plein. Quand la mer a venu plus chaud. Et qu'a tué place qui se pressent dans la gravité. La mer chaud a aussi changé de manière se pressent. Car qui était d'un côté et aller à l'autre côté. Cette liste a contribué en petit zingas en espace. Quand un petit pays nous a essayé de faire tout ça nous a fait. Pour assurer qu'il nous baisse à ce quantité de gaz nous a servi pour empêcher la terre. Et faut pour baisser à ce quantité de gaz nous a servi, c'est mitigation. Le climat a changé. Il a changé depuis que nous tout au niveau de la terre, car vous voulez gaz, l'huile et le chèbon. Et ça, quand on cause la terre, il a changé plus chaud. Ça, nous ne pouvons faire tout le même, c'est pour adapter. Faites tout ça, nous a fait pour préparer et répondre pour ces conséquences négatives à la cause du changement du climat. Nous tous, ça fait quelque chose. Par exemple, nous n'y pouvons assurer qui nous protéger tout ça nous a planté. C'est vie fumier qui est naturel. Pratique quand nous pour abattre des manches en temps cyclone et godlo. Construire canal pour de l'eau courir bien quand il faut. Et assurer qui canal là par les ordi. Faites tout ça qui est possible pour vivre en temps changement climat ça. Trouvez plus d'informations à ce plan d'adaptation national gouvernement et des marches ou même ça prend pour protéger corps et tout notre cette les siens. 
Welcome back. We join Prime Minister Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle en Cuyon. Monsieur Nisher, Monsieur Madame, Département qui est responsable pour l'information en gouvernement de la CGI, la CGIS, la CMP Télévision Nationale, PIA, NTN, qui est la Nouvelle Acquéole. Président, Primus Hutchinson. Premier ministre de la CGI, on est Alain Chasney, qui a profité de l'occasion en grande conférence Banque mondiale avec IMF, qui est prévu en Washington, D.C., en Amérique, pour une discussion et puis une délégation à ce pays pacifique. Discussion de la ministre des Affaires économiques, communication et changement de climat, hot pays Fiji, et aussi assistant directeur général pour ce pays, pays pacifique. La discussion est principalement à ce manière, ce pays qui a développé la terre, ni pour collaborer concernant le développement facilité pour résilience contre le changement de climat. Ça, c'est une façon pour ce pays à adresser le plan qui est en place pour adresser la situation à la première. Sans encore qu'il apporte plus de significance, comme ce pays n'a pas qu'à recevoir ce coût financier qui suffit, particulièrement pour divers bâtissements. Délégation d'accord qui, plus pour les autres, c'est pour y collaborer comme action qui est très critique pour aider pour préparer plus mal en la route. Parce qu'il est capable les Grecs dans l'affaire financière internationale, par les GESP et attention pour la position de ce pays qui a développé la terre. Délégation, à ces délégations du Premier ministre Chasney, c'était Honorable Guy Joseph, ambassadeur cette ci pour l'Amérique, Anton Antoine, et directeur général pour ce pays, Caribla OECS, Dr. Didicus Jones. Organisation Femmes, Amico, qui est engagé dans le produit et le business agricole, satisfait et puis pour que qui ont déjà fait, malgré qu'il n'y a pas fait. Euh, Jeff Asil. Groupe là, qui était engagé dans un grand spectacle culturel en Miko dimanche passé, qui était capable de montrer ses qualités jouées, qui m'a mis à jouer en tant longtemps, était placé à son exhibition divers produits pour le public là, et aussi acheter. Président de l'organisation, ça c'est l'organisation agricole femme, Mme Abeline Justin, remarque que le groupe là a coopéré à la façon pour toujours essayer de faire une production en haut degré et acceptable. Pour pratiquer. Il a ajouté que, en tout de ça, il n'y a pas d'apprécier qui, il n'y a pas d'apprécier qui, en n'importe business, il n'y a toujours ni à les casser. Depuis n'importe organisation, depuis ce n'est pas y a un monde qui est dedans, c'est tout le monde qui est dedans, c'est tout le monde qui est en l'hôpital, tout le monde qui est dedans, toute maladie. Donc, so, nous n'avons pas d'agir avec le monde, travailler avec eux pour mener, venir, pour faire ça, vous voulez. Ça fait qu'à faire ici, go activité festin, jouer quoi yon là. Qui, qui m'en est autre, quel est le signification de ce qu'on a pour vous supporter et venir ici à supporter Miko à faire ça? Oui, c'est un événement, ça, il est bon pour nous, là. Puis c'est là que nous avons fait ça, nous avons fait ça. Et bien, qui côté nous voulons vivre, et de l'air pas ça, ou qu'à jouer dans le monde. Qui a fait des choses pour le groupe ça là pour faire ça ici poser. En parlant de ça, le ministère de l'Agricole, en collaboration avec le gouvernement de Taïwan, a travaillé sur un projet pour les cultivateurs de produits plus à ces légumes et d'un oui, nous avons produit à cette ci en dit nous ne pouvons acheter un autre pays. Officier technical à bas projet ça là, qui a assisté, c'est Madame Agricole ça là, c'est Kema Prophet. So, nous avons travaillé et le gouvernement de Taïwan pour faire ça possible pour nous produire plus de ça sur so, la population. Nous avons mangé ça, nous avons produit en pays ya, et puis l'argent qui a circulé en de pays ya aussi. Les organisateurs spectaculaires amico, j'ai plané un grand tiré mété en observant ce moyen héritage créole. Il y a un grec pour discussion ça là. C'est Daniel Lebon qui a expliqué si j'ai qui a fait débat à ce Côté CGA, c'est S qui nous est supposé moderniser pour faire plus en goût jeunesse. En anglais, on a dit Should the Creole heritage be modernized to make it more attractive to the youth? So, nous avons invité tout ça ici pour venir 6 heures les 31 ans de dans grand l'école, l'école secondaire Miku pour participer à un gros discours. 
Est-ce que ça est a un plan pour encourager um, pour organiser l'activité ça là Faire yon côté micro ça a organisé ça tous les années pour encourager ces jeunesse là Absolument, ça c'est plan. Miku, quand vous connaissez, ça c'est place l'histoire, ça c'est place Sessen, avec c'est place Kilti. Ek, monsieur, mesdames, c'est comme ça, nous avons trouvé une nouvelle pour aujourd'hui. Je vous remercie autant pour garder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Je ne peux pas encore dire, quand ça veut la vie, nous avons présenté une nouvelle à Koyol. Après ça, je vous remercie pour présenté Michel. Merci au Pil Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Partly cloudy skies becoming cloudy at times with some scattered showers and possibly isolated thunderstorms. Lingering moisture and instability in the wake of a tropical wave is expected to continue to produce some scattered showers and possibly isolated thunderstorms over the region during the next 24 hours. Another tropical wave located several hundred miles east of the Lesser Antilles is moving westward near 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour and is expected over the region by Friday. A third tropical wave located over the eastern tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 12.23 p.m. and is low at present. The tide for Vieux Fort Bay was high at 1.30 p.m and is also low at present. The sea is slight to moderate with waves 2 to 4 feet or 0 0.6 to 1.2 meters. The sun will rise Thursday at 5.56 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.